Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are continuing our conversation with Roy Griffith, the CRPA Legislative Director. He is the man in the Capitol fighting for all of us, uh, whether we're CRPA members or not, making sure that they don't erode our Second Amendment rights uh, with state legislature. Before we get totally into it, I just want to remind you, please go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button. I know it can be a hassle, especially on YouTube, if they, because uh, they do have to, uh, you do have to have an account uh, to do these things, but it really helps us get our message out there with the 2022 elections coming up. Uh, we really want to get this message out to as many people as possible. So you can definitely help us out. Again, hit that subscribe button, uh, like, and share the videos. So Roy, uh, we were just talking about uh, the Humane Society's bear petition and how we uh, worked to make sure the Fish and Game Commission uh, did not put any uh, undue labor into that. And that's a great success for us. But something that uh, sort of was brought up at the tail end of that discussion uh, was um, bad legislation. And, and not just bad legislation, but the narrative that runs with a lot of these things. You see a lot of comments in this bear petition that simply aren't true, but that's definitely not just something that happens at the Fish and Game Commission meetings. It happens in our legislation all the time. Uh, you and I were talking earlier about a specific bill, AB 20, what is it, 2552? That's correct. Uh, you, want, you want to tell us about that one? Yeah, that's just one of many uh, pieces of legislation that um, AB 2552 basically requires more signage at gun shows because that's going to, more signage at gun shows where felons don't even go is going to make the streets safer. And it requires DOJ to go patrol half the gun shows in the state every year for the signage that's going to make our world a safer place. And the only good part about this bill is that, you know, for years we've heard all these nefarious stories of these, all these uh, nefarious acts of illegal gun sales that happen at the shows and in the parking lot. Well, this bill at least finally says DOJ has to recreate a yearly report documenting all these violations. Uh, on that subject alone, CRPA has, over the last five years, submitted 30 formal public information requests saying to the governor, two different governors, two different AGs, uh, numerous county sheriffs, city police departments, county board of supervisors, you name it. Anybody that may have, in any way, shape, or form, had access to that information. We've submitted over 30. How many... Uh, reports and nefarious activities do you think we've received back, Kevin? It, it's, I, it's zero. It's zero. It's zero. So that, that's first off, that's just laying the groundwork for how these gun shows are such clean events. But the good Assemblyman McCarty thinks that more signage is going to uh, make our streets safer. He had the nerve uh, two weeks ago in, in Assembly Public Safety, where he was pushing this bill, bill forward, to we all are aware of this horrific event that happened in Sacramento that they're calling a mass shooting. It was not a mass shooting. It was a gang shootout. The four individuals apprehended are all convicted felons, all of which were let out of prison early, should have been behind bars. <laughs> and they had illegal weapons, illegally altered weapons that you would never purchase at a gun show that they would never be allowed to purchase a gun at a gun show because they're felons. They're, they are not ghost guns. They stole these firearms, most likely. One of them was stolen. I don't know about the others. But I assure you they weren't purchased at a gun show. McCarty had the nerve to use that horrific incident to push forward his piece of legislation saying it would make the world a safer place and make these incidents not happen if we had more signage at a gun show. That's... <laughs> And they've been doing the same thing on these ridiculous uh, civil suits where they want, there's two different versions of the bill, one on the Senate side, one on the Assembly side. I won't waste everybody's gray matter with their numbers. They can go to our website and see our opposition letters. But federally, it's federally established you can't sue a business when someone goes and does something stupid or unlawful with their product. You can't do that. Can you imagine how much that erode our our, our integrity, our the commerce in the United States. If if I could go sue Ford because some drunk, you know, got in a car and hit me, that, does that make any sense? That's the stretch they're doing this. They're thinking that signage at a gun show 
is going to change the mindset of an individual who thinks that murder is okay because someone's wearing a different color than you, doesn't agree with you. You know, this was a Crips and Blood shootout on the streets of Sacramento, but signage is going to save that problem. Is that the most ridiculous stretch of the imagination? Since our early conception of societies, you know, since the time of the Egyptians, since the first written word, mankind has agreed that murder is the most egregious crime, the most, the most, everybody agrees, you don't murder your fellow man. Uh, whether you believe in the Bible or not, it's just the common word. But yet signage is going to change the mindset. More gun laws are going to change the mindset. No, the only thing that's going to change the mindset of these people is putting them behind bars. And we don't need common sense gun control. We need common sense people control. We need to get these felons off our street. We right now, best estimate, and it's a low estimate, is so we have 24,000 armed prohibited felons on the streets of California. These are the ones that DOJ knows about. And do you think that number's just been growing? It's been steady since I've taken this position on for six years. It's been a little bit reported higher, reported lower. But, and when we ask them, why aren't you dealing with this? They say they're too busy dealing with gun registration. And they haven't even started dealing with ammunition registration, which is going to kick in very soon here. And now we want these same DOJ agents to go around the state checking for signage at gun shows? Right. You tell me, Kevin. Well, okay. So I, I think that there are uh, multiple multiple things here. So I want to break this down a little bit. You mentioned first uh, that... Um, you've put in over 30 requests to provide any sort of evidence uh, of wrongdoing at California gun shows. I think that this is an extremely important thing to examine because when you're in an argument, and, and if you can call this back and forth an argument, you basically have uh, a state legislator saying, here's all the reasons why we need this legislation. Uh, us requesting that information is basically an open invitation to give us your evidence. So to me, there is zero reason why that wouldn't be shared unless they don't have it. I mean, is that is that the assumption here? They don't have it. Either they don't have it or they're flat out lying to us. The good retired Chief Lindley of DOJ testified a week or so ago in Assembly Public Safety that there's all these violations again going on at gun shows. So I, in my closing, in my testimony, because you know the, the support folks get to go first, I very nicely called the good chief out. I said, well, if what the, chief, the good chief is testifying to today is accurate, then they have failed to provide us information on public information requests. So something is not, you know, I've got that right on the public record. I'm calling them out on it, Kevin. I mean, the good Senator men, your senator from Orange County down there, he's the one that's been pushing all these crazy, he's picked up the torch on these crazy gun show bills. I called him out on it in public testimony last year, right on the, uh, in Assembly Public Safety, when his bill last year to eliminate uh, gun shows in all of California, which we backed it off to just, you know, we killed that bill down to all he got through and signed was Orange County um, Fairgrounds, but he was going after the state. I asked him right there in the committee room uh, and, the, to his to his uh, to his credit, um, Chairman uh, the uh, Chair Reggie Jones Sawyer, Assemblyman Sawyer Reggie Jones, let us read into public record. I read into public record that entire list, and I asked the good senator to. Uh, we've asked all these entities, including Orange right. County, and we've got nothing. So what exactly? Where are these violations if they're not being shared with us? So we're making our voice heard, but the sad thing is, Kevin, they're still. They're still saying the same company line. It's it's the it's uh, they drink so, the yeah. punch and they just are they're immune to the truth. And I, I think I, if I remember correctly, uh, some of a couple of the examples that uh, Senator Min used when he was trying to push that legislation last year were actually incidences that happened out of state. Uh, so you know you you have you have gun shows that are regulated differently in California than anywhere else. Uh, but if you have to try and reach to other areas of the country to create an argument for legislation in California, you're doing it the wrong way. But I think, and I, I'm pushing on this, Roy, because as you know, I think there are like three or four other bills trying to shut down gun shows uh, on the docket in, at the legislation in, uh, in Sacramento this year. 
Um, at, at its simplest level, these people are lying and they are trying to give us all of these reasons why gun shows should be shut down. We have very simply said, I understand what you're saying. Please give me the evidence. And they have provided none. Um, I, I think that that should really tell the whole story. Uh, and, and that should be evidence that they're lying because there's no other reason other than lying why they would not provide that to us. Because it, at the end of the day, if they had it, that would go in favor of their argument. Um, but uh, two, other, two other things I wanted to touch on uh, was the narrative. Um, we have the Department of Justice. And I mean, I, I did a video uh, with um, a gun store owner in Los Angeles County just a couple of weeks ago whose uh, COE, which is the Certificate of Eligibility, along with his FFL, which is his federal firearms license, uh, delayed. And he basically said the same thing. Uh, he got in contact with DOJ and they said that they, they, you know, they didn't have the labor output in order to meet the needs within the specified period of time that he gave himself. He ended up losing business. He had to lay off his employees because his, his paperwork took too long to get processed. Uh, and now you're talking about adding another thing uh, onto the load for the Department of Justice. I mean, you got to imagine it's already hit its tipping point. But at the end of the day, what it seems like is a circle. This is completely cyclical. They're creating a law and that law says we can let people out of jail early to support the narrative that they want, which is. We have too much violence, which supports the narrative of we need to get rid of guns. So, I mean, how premeditated can this actually seem when you look at it from the 30,000 uh, uh, foot perspective? Scary stuff, Kevin. It's scary. <clears throat> Their social experiment has failed. Their experiment was, you know, we can't lock these people up. We, you know. Uh, we can uh, rehabilitate them, uh, you know, they, <laughs> Smiley, you know, it's going to be my new name for a felon, you know, instead of Johnny Dirtbag, it's going to be Smiley. Um, he, he misbehaved in prison and still got out, you know, that's the one that had the fully automatic firearm up there. <clears throat> so you're right, not only are they letting them out early, they're not even putting away for the time they should be putting away. You know, in my 32 years in law enforcement, there's a time tested formula that's worked since the beginning of time, two prongs surety of apprehension. If I do it, I'm probably going to get caught. Severity of punishment. Two things. Take away either one of those parts of the equation and it falls apart. If they need to know in their little pea brain, if I do this, I'm probably going to get caught. And they need to know in their little pea felon brain that if I get caught, I'm going to go away for a very long time. And in my career, I contacted felons that I thought would have guns. And I'd say, you know, why didn't you have a gun with you? And they said, well, hey, Roy, if I had a gun with me, it'd be another 20 years on my sentence. I'm not doing it. That's gone, Kevin. That's gone. That's been from, from, guess who authored that piece of legislation three years ago? None other than the chair for Senate Public Safety, Mr. Bradford. I'm talking about SB 620 that did away with use a gun, go to jail, that put anywhere from five to 20 year enhancements on crooks who use a firearm knowingly in the commission of crime. <laughs> that's gone, you know, and, and in addition, like you said, there are the other uh, propositions and stuff that have been letting them out early. What? That's just a, <laughs> that's just a formula for disaster. And that's what we're seeing right now on our streets. We're seeing mayhem. We're seeing shootouts, gang shootouts in a very, what, you know, is a nice part of Sacramento. Unfortunately, part of Sacramento, they've been really trying to give rebirth to. That was just right around the corner from the beautiful new giant arena. You know, you think I'm in any hurry to go down to Sacramento and see a concert or something in a if I can't even walk to my car safely, you know? Right. So um, it's, uh, you're right. It's just a dangerous formula. And until they admit their social experiment has failed and the emperor is in fact naked, it's just gonna keep getting worse. 
Uh, Roy, I want to thank you for your time again. Uh, Roy Griffith, he is the CRPA legislative director. He is up in the Capitol. He is fighting for your rights. He's fighting for mine, whether you're a CRPA member or not, and he will continue to do so. But again, uh, we can make his job a little bit easier. I keep mentioning this. 2022 is an election year. We have the opportunity to put a lot of these anti-Second Amendment legislators on their rear ends and get people into office that will support our needs. All that we need to do is be educated and go to the ballot box with the Second Amendment as a priority. We are the largest voting bloc in California. No doubt about it. We just need to utilize it. Roy, I want to thank you again, and we'll see you all in the next video. Hey, the only thing I'll add, Kevin, is all of our letters on these bills we've talked about are on our website. Our viewers and listeners can just go grab those letters, cut and paste, send them into their local representatives because that's the only way we're going to, like you said, we've got to change the folks that are sitting in the seats. And they, they care about two things, getting reelected and making money to get reelected. And when they hear from their local constituents to vote no on AB 2552, to vote no on AB 1937, you know, they need, uh, the more letters we can get on these things, the better. So, you know, I want to encourage all of our listeners and viewers to uh, do just that let their voice be heard with their local representatives. Thanks, Kevin.